The pristine wilderness of the Antarctic is rumoured to be one of the most haunted places in the world. Of course, this is based on the number of ghosts per capita. With the icy continent's population fluctuating between about 1,100 over winter to 4,500 during summer, this makes roughly one restless spirit for every nine people who inhabit the region. The ghosts of explorers, scientists and tourists are reported to wander the chilling terrain and abandoned buildings along with the other eerie phenomena found there. Haunted Explorer Huts in the early 1900s, many explorers aspired to be the first to reach the geographic South Pole. In 1911, British Royal Navy officer Robert Falcon Scott and his team embarked on the Terra Nova expedition, setting up camp at the edge of the Great Ice Barrier. While some men remained there with supplies and shelter, other team members pushed forward. The expedition did not go as planned when a rival reached the Pole about a month before Scott's team. And in 1912, Scott and four other men perished trying to return to the hut. One by one, they succumbed to frostbite, gangrene and starvation. Scott's final journal entry recorded that every day when attempting to set out for the depot 11 miles away, the men were beaten back by the whirling blizzard outside the door of the tent. With all growing weaker, he predicted that the end cannot be far. Scott's hut still stands and is said to be intensely haunted, especially around a memorial cross that was later placed in the ice near the cabin to commemorate three of the men who expired at the hut. Not only are there said to be the ghosts of these explorers lingering around the cross, but the cross is also said to attract the wandering spirits of others who have perished trying to reach the geographic south pole of Antarctica, as if it is in some way a station for those intrepid deceased. The hut itself is also reported to be permeated with a sense of ominous dread and home to shadow figures and various anomalous noises which include footsteps, voices and the sounds of something dragging across the floorboards. Those who have visited report feeling uneasy with a strong sense of being watched. In 1958, Sir Edmund Hillary, the New Zealand mountaineer and explorer who with Sherpa Norgay Tenzing was the first to reach the summit of Mount Everest, sought an even more extreme exploration. Five years after his Mount Everest climb, he reached Antarctica and found himself at explorer Sir Ernest Shackleton's abandoned hut. Shackleton, who conducted several gruelling expeditions to the Antarctic, had passed in 1922 and is buried on South Georgia Island. While describing himself as a rational man who does not really see things, Hillary later claimed to have seen Shackleton's ghost on entering the hut. He said, When I opened the door, I distinctly observed Shackleton walking towards me and welcoming me. Other strange phenomena haunt Wardy House, named after James Wardy, who was chief scientist on Shackleton's endurance expedition from 1914 to 1917. The hut was constructed in 1947 after the previous building was destroyed by a tsunami and it is now considered a historic site and monument. After hearing several reports of paranormal presences, investigators from Destination Truth spent a night researching the area. Shadow figures had been seen to move about inside the house and even lights flicked on and off when there is no connected power source. Unnervingly, the hut was still set up with furniture and canned food, just as if it were still inhabited by the explorers of the early 20th century. Members of the team could hear the frenzied flicking of a light switch and the slamming of doors during their stay in the hut, while objects like jar lids fell off shelves by themselves. One of the investigators registered that he sensed a heavy, menacing presence and all the other members of the team nodded in silent agreement. Plane Crash Victims Antarctica started to become a popular tourist destination in the 1970s. Sightseers booked day trip flights from New Zealand and were able to enjoy a spectacular aerial view of the harsh icy continent. However, one such flight turned fatal due to poor visibility and pilot data. The plane careered into the side of Mount Erebus at 300 miles per hour, with the impact instantly ending the lives of all 257 passengers. Apparently, the passengers' remains were stored at McMurdo Station, an American base on Antarctica's Ross Island, prior to being transported back to New Zealand. 
Ali Barden was sent to work there and reported that she knew the storage building was empty when she arrived as it was padlocked from the outside. However, on stepping into the building, she said that the hair on the top of her head stood on end as she was met by the sound of undeniable footsteps gathering upstairs. She froze as what she described as a slow rhythm of footsteps echoed from the back of the building to the front. She has also said that the crash victims haunt the big gym on site. Many other visitors to the site believe the spirits of the plane passengers are still haunting the building, claiming to hear voices, seeing short trails of unexplained footprints and feel eerie presences. Some even claim to see the ghosts of flight victims wandering aimlessly across the frozen tundra or appearing within the actual base, as well as hearing an eerie moaning and screaming. As the spectres never seem to interact with anyone, it has been speculated that they may not even know that they have passed, or that they are simply residual memories somehow imprinted onto the landscape like images on film. Abandoned Stations Because of Antarctica's inhospitable conditions, failed industries like whaling and remoteness, parts of the continent are littered with abandoned buildings and other structures. Military bases, research stations and factories have decayed into ominous ghost towns covered in rust and ice, and many still contain eerie artefacts of the humans who once dwelt there. There are even abandoned ships in the bays. With the increasingly warmer temperatures in the polar regions, the stored seal blubber in some cabins has begun to go rancid, adding to the unnerving, almost hostile ambience of Antarctica's many ghost towns. Deception Island is one such site, which once housed an old whaler's station, and the bones from their slaughter are still scattered along the beach. Abandoned during the Great Depression with the drop in oil prices, it was repurposed as a British base during World War II. Some visitors to the island have reported seeing apparitions and light orbs, and have heard disembodied voices and unexplained loud banging there. Paranormal investigators from Destination Truth also visited this site where they heard mysterious loud bangs and observed a shadowy figure. They also captured a thermal signature in a window and heard what sounded like a Morse code SOS being tapped out inside an empty shack. Eerie Seafarers In 1862, a report about the unfortunate schooner named Jenny was published in the German geographical magazine Globus. With an anonymous author, the bizarre story claimed to recount the findings of the whaler called Hope in 1840. On September 22, 1840, the crew of the Hope spotted a battered ship emerging from between two icebergs in the Drake Passage, which borders the South Shetland Islands of Antarctica. They observed the figures of seven men who seemed to be standing at attention on the main deck. The derelict schooner was identified as the Jenny out of the Isle of Wight. As the hope neared, its sailors realised that the men appeared frozen solid, as if they had been caught out in a bad storm and flash frozen. All the bodies seemed to be in good condition and only recently frozen. Captain Brighton of the hope then boarded the Jenny to investigate further. Below decks, he encountered a man writing in the ship's log and greeted him, but did not receive a response. Brighton quickly realised that the man was frozen solid like the rest of his crew. Scanning the log, he noted the last entry from nearly 20 years ago. May 4, 1823. No food for 71 days. I am the only one still alive. If the log entry was accurate, the ship and her crew had expired in the freezing cold 20 years earlier, although they still looked alive to the casual glance. The Jenny had left her home port in 1822, with her last port of call recorded as Kalea, Peru. Brighton retained the logbook, intending to return it to the ship's owners, and continued his search. This further revealed the sad discovery of the captain's wife, found in the master's cabin with their dog. The captain of the Jenny had sat on his ship, surrounded by death, and used his last remaining strength to update the log, before joining his wife in eternal sleep. The Hope soon departed its encounter with the Jenny, leaving the ill-fated vessel to drift wherever the winds and tides took her. She may still be sailing the Antarctic waters to this day.